all, let me tell you a little bit about myself. As, as Bill said, uh, uh, I grew up in southeast Missouri, down on a cotton field, uh, a little town called Bragg City near Kennett. And uh, you may not know much about Kennett, but probably the only way you know it is is the hometown of Cheryl Crow, the singer. Well, my celebrity claim to fame is I dated Cheryl Crow's older sister once. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, if you, if you can't remember anything else, you know, we still live in show trouble, so that's, I guess, okay. Well, we're going to talk about economic development and selling Missouri, and I found out that groups like yourself can be better salesmen than Con and Jody and I and the other economic developers because you have more outreach to your customers, your suppliers, your other businesses, uh, companies may look in your area. And I'll guarantee you, the company looking to come into a community, the first thing they're going to talk about is what do you, existing businesses, think about that community. And if you're not happy, it's going to show to a new business. So uh, it's important for you to understand how to sell uh, and what some of the assets of both your community and the state are. And we're going to talk about some of those things and some other things. And by the way, if I forget, please somebody... Uh, Tom or somebody when we talk about Boeing. So, you know, if I forget, I will bring that up uh, in a little while then. All right, here we go. Okay, so economic development is primarily about jobs, reducing unemployment, increasing personal income, increasing state and local tax base, and redeveloping blighted areas. You know, so we, we're involved in a lot of different things. Uh, as, uh, as mentioned, we were in tourism, we we're in uh, export uh, promotion. So it's a wide-ranging department, and the best part of it is we, we get to work very closely with our community partners, um, and, you know, there are many throughout the Kansas City metro area, including Kansas City Area Development Council, so it's critically important that we know what everybody's doing. So let's talk about a few statistics and how things are kind of going in Missouri. We've actually had some record years in the last two or three years of exports. Uh, we've seen a considerable growth in uh, a lot of different things, transportation, equipment, chemicals, and food products are the biggest ones. But there's a lot of small companies that have learned that they can expand their sales significantly by exporting. And, and if you or your associate uh, companies that you deal with is considering exporting and don't, doesn't know how, please contact our office because we do uh, training uh, sessions and analysis on what kinds of products and services would best sell in different companies or countries and how to go through that process. So we really uh, are taking some new initiative in that. What are some of the uh, industry sectors in Missouri that are growing? Construction, retail, healthcare, and financial and insurance is the fastest growing sectors. Uh, you know, not surprisingly, and, and I guess in a, not in a bad way, the state and federal government is the, is the biggest decrease. So a lot of people say that's good, and that is probably good. But anyway, you can see construction, as uh, we were talking about a while ago, there's a lot of activity, and that's a great sign. Unemployment rate. This is, I believe, the 50th, yes, 50th consecutive month that we're below the U.S. Uh, unemployment rate, and it was at a high of 9.4% uh, in October of 2010. We're down to 6.4, and I'll bet you, I'll bet you we'll be below 6% early next year, primarily because GM and Ford are starting to add the jobs they announced a year ago. Uh, Ford is in the process, as most of you know, of uh, building a, a, a new added facility for the transit. It's a vehicle that's a commercial vehicle that can be used for all kinds of different purposes, anything from ambulances to small school buses to uh, construction type of vehicle. It has got phenomenal potential, and I suspect that thing is really going to sell like hotcakes, and we're going to see an expansion off of that facility. Uh, and plus the fact the F-150 is really still uh, selling great, too. So that potential in, in Kansas City is growing. There's a number of suppliers that have been announced that are growing in the, in the metro area. So that unemployment rate, because of Ford, GM, and many others that are just coming online now and, and throughout the first and next quarter, uh, it's really going to see a big jump in it. So how's, uh, how's the Kansas City area doing compared to elsewhere in the state? Everybody wants to see you know, what sort of the comparison is. Columbia, if you've not been Columbia lately, uh, the, the university is obviously a huge driver uh, of economic activity, but it's also seen a springboard for companies like IBM that's now added about 750 jobs in technology. 
and, and many other smaller companies. Uh, a company called Newsy, for example. If, uh, if you want to go on Newsy.com, it's an interesting, it's an aggregator of news. So they, if you look at a topic, a uh, news topic, they'll give you different snippets from different world newspapers, magazines, TV stations. And it's a really interesting concept. And they were just sold to, uh, I think, Scripps Howard, if I'm not mistaken, a larger company, but they're still going to be based out of Columbia. And it's really an interesting process. So Columbia's doing well. Springfield's doing pretty good. Kansas City is a little bit above the middle at 103. St. Louis doing not so good. Uh, you know, a lot. When I go on one side of the state and then the other, they always say, well, you know, the other state's doing better than us, and let's try to keep track. Well, <laughs> Uh, you know, St. Louis is uh, its an older city. It's got some issues. Uh, Kansas City is, uh, as we were talking about a few minutes ago, generally is, is considered more entrepreneurial, more new money, more uh, sort of, uh, you know, ground up kind of business. Uh, and that's, that's good. Uh, you know, Kansas City has phenomenal potential. Not saying St. Louis doesn't, but it's just different. And Jefferson City, just because of the cutbacks in state government, they're having problems and uh, it's my hometown, so I'm I feel for them. Uh, labor demand. You can see, uh, the first thing you may notice is retail. Why is it so big? Well, that's a reflection of consumer spending. Uh, retail by itself, you know, if you're in retail, this is not disparaging, but it's not the best paying jobs just from the job, uh, you know, the person who's taking the jobs. But it does reflect uh, consumer confidence that's coming back in the economy, and that, that's a good thing. So you can see some of the others, truck drivers. Uh, I'm seeing around the state in different areas uh, significant bonuses for truck drivers and nurses, and a huge shortage around the state. So what are the, uh, this is a survey, uh, but what are some of the biggest uh, skill demands that companies want to see? Communication skills, organization skills, writing, uh, and then specialized skills in sales, scheduling, accounting, and you can see some of the others. So this is some of the things that, that uh, we and others are looking at to beef up in our training programs and education process to meet the needs of uh, companies around the state. And I'll get into more about, about that later, about um, the uh, workforce issues. Looking ahead, we see uh, employment gains of the, the actual jobs that, are, uh, that I mentioned are being created that will come online. Construction uh, jobs and permit building permits are a really good sign of future activity. Uh, retail jobs increase in consumer spending. Auto sales are up, especially trucks. And the risk are, especially in St. Louis, this is really where St. Louis is, is worried about, and I'll talk about Boeing, but Boeing is uh, military oriented for the most part, 15,000 workers. And a lot of their products are uh, having problems just because of the federal sequestration, uh, cutbacks by um, mil military hardware by other countries. So uh, that's a big concern in the St. Louis area for Boeing and some other defense-related companies. What are some of the drivers? What really is uh, we seeing uh, about having, uh, you know, the, the real impact of increasing employment? And, and I know that you all are concerned about growing your community in the Kansas City region. So, but what really drives that? And let's look at some of the studies. Primary businesses are the types of companies that mostly sell outside of the, the local market area. They bring new money in, and those kind of companies typically pay quite a bit more than the local companies that I mentioned. Secondly, they're about 25% of businesses, so they only represent a quarter of the businesses, but they're the primary driver of the economy. And in particular, those companies that are STEM-oriented, science, technology, engineering, and math, are the, really the ones that are focused on, on high growth and that if you concentrate on STEM-related companies, you will see much more significant impact in your community. That's what all the studies say, and, uh, you know, um, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more later also. Local businesses are important, too. Don't think they're not, because obviously they're 75% uh, of the businesses. They create a lot of sales tax. Uh, they, they thrive by recirculating within the community and help that be a, a better quality of life. So it's not that they're important. Uh, it's just different. So let's talk about what drives the economy uh, uh, from, you know, from uh, a job perspective. There are the direct jobs, but there's also indirect jobs created by businesses, by suppliers and other things that directly relate to their company. And there's what's called induced jobs, which is the retail, local services, and other economic activity 
because of new spending and, and uh, the need for services uh, created by a project. So let's sort of see how that works. This is the job multiplier by certain types of businesses on 100 direct new jobs. So the numbers you see here are the number of indirect and induced jobs created by 100 direct jobs. Okay. So in primary businesses, you can see chemical manufacturing and food processing is 300, 319, and the others, and retail trade and the others are a little less. So why do economic developers primarily uh, uh, recruit and work on primary businesses? Because of the spinoff effect. And typically those companies on the right side have um, higher payrolls as too. Same thing from gross, national or gross domestic product. Manufacturing information and the others you see at the top have much more uh, multiplier effect as far as the uh, spin-off effect of GDP than, than the others. Site selection. Uh, independents like Kansas City, Lee Summit, Blue Springs, and all your uh, Missouri competitors, plus all your friends in Kansas, are after uh, a lot of companies. And in the business of site selection and recruitment, if you're 20% 20, 20 successful, you're probably in the Economic Development Hall of Fame. It is a very tough business, very tough. And so let's talk about the process of site selection and what uh, the companies are looking for. It's a process of elimination. When a company is looking for a site in, a, in various communities, uh, they're trying to eliminate ones to get down to a manageable number. So you always have to remember one thing can knock you out, you know, one necessary thing. It's very highly competitive. Uh, typically, it's global for large projects now. And the other thing is 75 to 85 percent of the initial site searches, we're told, are based on existing buildings of a particular configuration. So if you don't have a supply of existing buildings, you're losing out on a lot of initial searches. So that's something you might want to think about in future investments in your community. Preparation of information is critical because of the speed of decision-making process now. You have to have a lot of information on your website. It has to be in a certain format. You have to have flexible information because the, the need for speed is critical and Boeing just proved to how critical that was, which I'll talk about later too. Key issues. You're, you can't win a deal by yourself when I say, you know, the city of independence or, or this agency. You have to coordinate with, with your, your regional partners, your workforce partners, your private sector partners. Everybody has to be in sync. Otherwise, you're not going to present that total picture of what you're, you're, you're capable of doing. Uh, companies don't look at an individual company when they look at a site. They look at a region because of workforce, because of transportation amenities, other things, uh, educational facilities, things like that. So always recognize is that when you're in competition, you have to present not just the community, but the region as a whole and bring those partners in to help. So what are the, what's the process of site selection? The first one is proximity. Companies typically have to be within a certain range of their customers, their suppliers, uh, or other key things that they have to have. It's, it's rare that, it, that companies do a nationwide search. It's typically focused on, on a fairly narrow uh, area just because of certain needs that they have. The second one, and becoming more stronger, is people, which is talent. Talent specific to the skills necessary for that company. Companies are typically looking at a 30 maybe a 60-mile radius, uh, a drive time radius. So again, it's a regional look, not necessarily just in your community. And they're looking at the graduates in your area, uh, what some of the test scores are, things like that. So quality of education is much more important than it was uh, some time ago because the jobs are more tech-oriented. Place. If you're going to have a, a, a company to expect to attract and retain top talent, they want to have a place that, that is conducive to that within your community. So again, uh, you know, 20 years ago, Jody and I and others were primarily in smokestacks chasing where it didn't matter a whole lot because skills weren't as critical. Now, skills are the number one issue, so quality of place to attract and retain skills is another important component. Product. Product, again, is that available building. And I mentioned that 75 or 85 percent uh, are for existing buildings. So the product has to be in place. It has to be 
uh, ready uh, because of speed, and that's certainly critical. The next one is perception. Uh, perception meaning that the community has to have, have every indication that they want that kind of business, that they'll, they'll expedite permitting, they will do whatever is necessary to try to cooperate in infrastructure, all those kind of things. And so uh, it has to be considered a very supportive situation. And if, and if you make it through all that gauntlet with meeting all the 30 to 60 specific requirements of the company, then it gets down to the overall price. And what that includes is all the variable costs like transportation, taxes, incentives, uh, electrical costs, construction costs, everything, all those variable costs is rolled into a spreadsheet. And a company will typically look, you know, from 10 to 20 years on that spreadsheet, which one has the lowest overall cost, almost always wins. Not always, but almost always wins then. So that's sort of the way it works, but there's one more important component, which is persistence. Like I said, if you were, if you win 20% of your deals, you're in the Hall of Fame. But your <coughs> reputation of being professional and everybody having their act together will get back to those site selection firms and company executives and they want to deal with those companies or those communities that are prepared so that persistence is critically important. Now, you're, uh, you're trying to sell your community and you're also trying to sell your state. So in order to be a good salesman, you've got to know the selling points. And let's talk about that for a second. You can't sell something to a general basis and be successful. You have to sell it to a specific audience. And so at our website, you can go to uh, what we are considered our seven targeted industries that we have the best chance of, of, uh, of growing Missouri on, and those include advanced manufacturing, information technology, and biotech. That's the first three. We have particular selling points for all three of those, as you can see these. And then these are the other four, energy solutions, health sciences and services, financial and professional services, and logistics. So if you're dealing with companies in those particular areas, we have a separate web page of the key selling points for each one of those that uh, can help you and, uh, and, and the economic developers for selling Missouri on those, uh, on those uh, particular industries. But overall, uh, Missouri is, uh, has central uh, access and transportation, which is valuable in a lot of different ways. Highway network's pretty darn good. Again, we can get to uh, most points of the United States within a couple of days of uh, truck drive. Now, stability, you think, why is this important? Because companies want to have the confidence that there's not going to be big swings in taxes or laws or other things. And, you know, uh, having a AAA bond rating, you might think it's a big deal, but trust me, it is because that's uh, compared to like our neighbor to the uh, east, Illinois, which is all kinds of financial problems. We had that stability in Missouri saying we are AAA bond rated. We have a state required balanced budget and we can't pass taxes, state or local taxes without a vote. And I tell companies a lot of times, Missouri is rejected by I think two to one margin to increase the lowest cigarette tax in the country, which would only have been the third lowest cigarette tax. So it's probably likely we're not going to has too many other taxes then. Again, the workforce is critically important. Uh, your community is going to have different attributes, but uh, having, uh, having uh, 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 high school attainment well above the state or the national average is critically important. Having uh, the uh, number of people in your community with bachelor's degree and higher is certainly on the radar screen of most companies, and so you can see some of the other, other indicators. As far as cost, Six lowest over energy costs, tenth best regulatory require, uh, environment, and fifth lowest taxes per capita. Missouri is a low tax state. And uh, community or companies want to go where the other companies have located. You know, it's sort of the herd mentality in a lot of ways. And we can show uh, across the state the growth in different sectors, uh, you know, especially in our targeted industries. Well, let's talk about our neighbor to the west a little bit because there's been a lot of noise over the last couple of years about taxation in Kansas. Well, Missouri really is, is overall a better tax state. Uh, you know, the income tax uh, reduction that Kansas passed, that's only one of several taxes that a company pays. So you can see the, uh, the rating by the tax foundation that was done against our, our two neighbors on the other side of the state. Trends in economic development. 
what uh, what really is, is kind of happening, uh, you know, sort of the the, the uh, newer things in economic development. And let's see what 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 some of the studies show. If you want to be successful, talent is the key. Like I said before, uh, attracting educated people, having that quality of life to attract that young talent, uh, having the kind of amenities that knowledge workers want to want to have that downtown funky atmosphere. Uh, in Austin, Texas, which is considered one of the best technology growth areas, the, the slogan, the economic development slogan, is keep Austin weird. Well, that doesn't attract me very much, but for a 25-year-old tech worker, that's a pretty cool thing to have, you know. So uh, you have to think like they do. Uh, regions prosper if organizations and individuals have the ability to learn and adapt. It's always a learning process. Every day that I go to conferences, I learn something new that, uh, you know, I haven't thought about before. And most of it has to do with attracting talent, keeping knowledge workers, uh, technology company growth, entrepreneurship, things like that. And then bold partnerships. 25 years ago, uh, when I was doing economic development, it was primarily led by the state and by cities, public entities. Now, there are so many other partners, and it should be, and that's how we get things done. And we've got to be smart about using our partners because uh, it's so involved in economic development with utilities, with workforce, and all the other things. Wall Street Journal said the skills gap is growing. Uh, there is such an uh, um, increase in technology requirements uh, for companies, even the online manufacturers, and I, and I hate to say this, but I heard uh, uh, news this morning coming in here, <coughs> dodging the ice storm in Boonville, by the way, uh, <coughs> that one of the uh, one of our uh, old line manufacturing companies down in southeast Missouri has decided to move to Mexico. Well, they didn't adapt to technology changes, and you know when you can have one fifth of the workforce cost, that was just imminent, and it's sad to say because that was 400 jobs lost. But that's happening, especially in the rural parts of our state and some, some of the metro areas as well. But if companies, if you see a company that's not adapting to new technology and investing in new technology, it's a risk for relocating offshore just simply because of the wage differential. This is a, a magazine called CEOs for Cities. Education is the biggest factor driving economic growth. And Brookings says technology has been the key driver of economic uh, growth over the uh, two decades, fueling innovation and entrepreneurship. And again, uh, you know, it's sort of thinking a different way than we did several years ago is if you want to attract uh, technology companies, you have to attract those workers first. Because some studies, and uh, this is just one of several, but this study says that 75% of technology workers first want to live in a certain area, you know, and then they'll find a job. Now, you know, that's not the way I was raised, but it seems more and more that young technology workers will go to an area first and look for, for work. And STEM jobs, like I said, STEM is critically important. So we, you know, as we as economic developers have to figure out the ways to help encourage uh, you know, the K-12 systems, the higher ed, uh, you know, secondary schools to, to more focus on STEM, and that's something we're working on. Uh, for example, one of the initiatives that was uh, started about a year and a half ago was down in Lee Summit with the University of uh, uh, Central Missouri, what is it called now? UCM, uh, the Innovation Campus. And if you're not familiar with the Innovation Campus, it's a, uh, it's a partnership between uh, technology companies, primarily Cerner and, and some others, that need uh, these kinds of high-tech workers, uh, the uh, Lee Summit School District and, and UCM, to partner in accelerating the, uh, the four-year degrees that uh, IT workers would get, while at the same time having internships with the companies. And I think they can graduate in three years, and the tuition is greatly reduced because of of the accelerated process, and uh, we wound up putting, uh, I think, about a million dollars in tuition reduction to get it kick started. Uh, and uh, we actually took that concept and uh, added another nine million dollars for uh, uh, nine other uh, projects of that type around the state about a year ago. 
And we see that as a very dramatic uh, um, initiative that can be grown in, in other areas and, and hope that does happen. Because you can see 60% of new jobs require degrees in STEM and only 20% of the workforce has this. So we've all got to figure out ways to encourage our kids to go more into STEM, uh, have third graders more adopt that as, as something that they love to do, and have more high school graduates go into it in college and, and keep those college graduates in STEM because it's tough. It's not an easy degree. How can you help? Well, you are the salesman. Like I said before, you're going to reach more businesses than all the economic developers in the room put together. So if you get leads, if you, uh, if, if you get leads that, uh, that we can work on, we'd be glad to try to do that. Uh, talk to your business groups about Missouri and about uh, your community. <coughs> Excuse me. And if you see marketing opportunities that we're not taking advantage of, uh, trade shows or other events, let us know and we'll try to work that in. Okay. So, I'm going to talk a little bit about Boeing then and I'll take some questions. Um, back about a month ago, it was before Thanksgiving, about a month ago, the uh, state of Washington uh, had worked on special legislation for the Boeing 777X. This is an airplane that two months ago uh, was showcased at the Dubai Air Show and received over $100 billion of orders. And it's not even a plane that's been engineered yet. It's been in concept, uh, but Boeing has done enough work on it to show that it will have 10% uh, better fuel efficiency and 12% lower operating costs. So it just caught fire at the Dubai Air Show. So they're scrambling around to make this and um, had a deal in the state of Washington, thought that was a done deal. But the union, the uh, machinists, rejected the, uh, their contract by two to one margin. That was over some pension issues. So Boeing said, okay, we're going to shop this around and take it somewhere else. So they sent a request for proposal out to about 15 states. And uh, um, St. Louis was, uh, was one that they targeted but because primarily they have uh, 15,000 uh, military um, you know, operations there now. And uh, so uh, just last Tuesday night, uh, we finished the RFP. It was 14 inches thick. It was this thick. And uh, we had 45 people uh, working on it with us, uh, utilities, community colleges, some other economic development staff. It was a phenomenal uh, effort. Uh, uh, right before Thanksgiving, uh, the governor decided to call a special session to, uh, to modify our existing incentive programs to expand the uh, caps just for this project. And, uh, Surprisingly, uh, we, we thought it would pass, but uh, it went really smooth. Uh, the cooperation by the legislators was uh, unprecedented, nothing I've ever seen like that before. And uh, so we are now in the uh, waiting game, uh, which I think uh, probably around the first of the year we'll get some kind of preliminary indication if we're still in the hunt, but the final decision should be in mid-January. But it was a a whirlwind. I've never seen anything happen this quickly and, uh, and develop so fast and the requirements for information was just off the chart. So I'm glad it's over with. <laughs> so how about some questions? Just answered all your questions. Yes. Yeah. I noticed that uh, St. Joseph was pretty high up on the uh, recent progress and I was wondering, you know, they've had problems for years and years What's going on at St. Joe? I think it's one company that made all the difference there is Triumph Foods. They've got now 2,800 workers. It, and they're, uh, I talked to their former manager of the plant just a couple of days ago. They're slaughtering 22,000 hogs a day, if, I, if I've got that information right. I mean, that's a lot of hogs. <laughs> So you better start eating bacon because it's yeah, coming out of the same job. <laughs> Other questions? Yes. What impact are you seeing that Google Fiber is having in the area? Uh, you know, I think it's probably more perception than anything else. I'm not sure that I can say any specific activity that happened because of that, but the perception that Google decided to invest in this metro area sort of reinforced that whole entrepreneurial atmosphere. And I can tell you that overall, 
when I talk to people outside of Missouri, the, the perception is Kansas City is the young, entrepreneurial, let's, let's take a diet for it, risk takers, you know, and again, I like St. Louis, don't get me wrong, but it's kind of considered old money and Kansas City is the, the new cowboy. So, uh, and, and uh, nationally, you want to be in that position because the young companies want to be an exciting place to be around other young cowboys. And uh, cowboys are a good thing to be nowadays. Yeah. Mike, what's your uh, crystal ball say uh, that we might expect out of the legislature this coming year? Okay, the question was uh, what may we see in the legislature this year? Well, I'm hoping uh, that uh, uh, we can get a bill that will allow us to uh, uh, end the bidding war with Kansas. Uh, the governor came out about two, three weeks ago and said that uh, uh, we had uh, uh, almost had a deal with Kansas. Uh, honestly, they sort of got cold feet from pressure from Johnson County, but uh, I think that uh, I think that will be one of the things. There will be another attempt at tax cut. The only thing about the tax cut, I mean, everybody likes the tax cut. First of all, Missouri's already low taxes to begin with. It's not like that's the number one issue that's impeding economic development. But um, it comes directly off the general revenue. And that general revenue, uh, most people think, should be more invested in education because, as you can see the statistics, that's where we get the best return on investment to develop the economy. So it's going to be a big debate, and I uh, don't know how it's going to turn out. So I think those are two good issues as far as economic development goes. What about incentive programs? Incentive programs, uh, last session we were successful in getting uh, a modification and improvement to our existing incentive programs. Uh, it's now called Missouri Works. I've talked to a few of you in the room so far uh, already about it. Please go to our website at dvd.mo.gov and check out Missouri Works. Uh, it's, a, it's combined four of our existing programs into one, streamlines it, makes it more flexible, a little more powerful, and, um, you know, that, that should work real well. But I don't think there's going to be anything else that's significant. Uh, there will be an attempt for tax credit reform, but that's been attempted for the last five or six years and hadn't really gone anywhere, so we'll see. But thank you all. Appreciate it. Mike, thank you very much, and we want to. We've prepared a 